Hello Internet, it's Sal Good Sam here. So, I haven't done one of these in a while, I thought I would post a, a new podcast. It's been about a year since my last one. And uh, I'm just going to do a short one, talk about some stuff while I play. If you're watching the YouTube channel, you'll see me uh, some video of me working on a page from Bastard's Tale. Um, I just wrapped up all primary art on Dracula, Son of the Dragon with Mark Samuel, and I'm currently doing colors on that. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll probably end up doing some uh, uh, screen captures of my coloring process to post on YouTube. I've been working with uh, Flatter on those to help get it done a little faster. It's definitely proving to be very helpful. Becca Kinsey, I think is how you pronounce your last name. I'm not sure if I've, if I've said that right, but I think it's Becca Kinsey. This is really useful. I, I, I did the first 20 or so on my own uh, solo just to work out the process and like exactly how I was going to do it. The whole thing with Son of Dracula, Son of the Dragons, is I initially kind of wanted to do it in black and white, but Mark was really keen on having a color edition. Um, but I wanted to do it like a, a, a minimalistic uh, sort of desaturated coloring, partially because it's a period piece and partially because it's a little bit simpler and so in the in the art I had to figure out what level of detail I was going to select out features like I'm going to do a whole figure in one color or I'm going to break out different parts of the clothes etc. So yeah I did the first 20 or so of those to work that out um, and also have an example to show to the flatter and then uh, Beck is going to help with about two-thirds of the book uh, and so that's good. I'd get her to probably do all of it except that we've got a budget to watch so um, I have to keep things under the funds that we had from the Kickstarter back when we fundraised for this thing. Um, and then when that gets all done, I will have uh, two issues of Revolver to come out with the black and white versions of Dracula's and Dragon in them, and new Bastard's Tale episodes, and, and some other things I'm working on. And I, I will also have uh, probably some other stuff in Revolver soon that you haven't been seeing from me a lot in print. I'm probably going to start sharing more of my other creative output. So I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you know I do some audio work. Uh, I do uh, I'm playing with video. I also have a, a long history of photography, and uh, I paint, and uh, I do commercial illustration along with comics and drawing for myself. And I teach as of the last like, five or six years. So I'm thinking of trying to find ways to integrate all that into Revolver more. Um, I'm also planning to shift Patreon to become more of like the digital incarnation of Revolver. Uh, it was sort of always the plan, but it was a little bit hampered because of uh, the fact that I was a lot of work I was, work I was doing for the last few years has been Dracula work, and that had a Kickstarter related to it, and that kind of complicated things in terms of what I could show when and where and who. Um, but once I'm done with the Dracula work and it's all been published, it gets pretty simple. I plan to just put everything out through Patreon and Revolver as in, in serial as I'm working on it, and then I'll collect work that needs to be collected into books. Um, and then the, the print version of Revolver, it goes with CreateSpace for the print edition, but uh, Kindle Direct is being merged with CreateSpace, and I think Kindle Direct is sort of dominating that relationship. I'm still seeing how it evolves, but so that means it'll be available through Kindle now as well. I was kind of working on that, but it was a whole separate process before to get it onto Kindle. I'm not sure how it's going to work now. Um, comics on Kindle, you need to download an app and work out the reading flow, the stuff that Comixology used to do for you or does do for you. Kindle made you do yourself, but now like Comixology is also Amazon, and Kindle's Amazon, and CreateSpace is Amazon, so I'm assuming all of this is going to end up being merged. Uh, Comixology has its print-on-demand service as well, um, or its print exclusive. Anyway, they're, they're doing print books as well, so I, I think that eventually all this stuff's going to kind of fold together into one system. That's, a, that's pros and cons. It simplifies things on in one hand, and on the other hand, it means that the market is getting smaller in terms of venues and, and ways for creators to get their work out. I'm not sure how I feel about that. A lot of it depends on the execution, but monopolies are seldom a good thing, so I'm a little bit apprehensive about how that's going to go. Uh, at any rate, it does mean that uh, it'll become fairly straightforward that the digital incarnation of Revolver will be available through uh, in, in bite-sized installments, Patreon, and then as a digital download from Patreon on my website and through uh, Amazon via Comixology and probably Kindle Direct, and then ultimately uh, print on demand through um, whatever Amazon ends up doing with CreateSpace and slash Kindle Direct. Um, but I'm also going to put it on Lulu, I think, and I'm going to start probably using Lulu more. Uh, I've been looking at them just because uh, they had uh, more 
in Canada, more local printers. So I think I, and, and I like some of the print quality I've seen on friends' books. I think for certain formats, they're a better deal the, for the color, I think it was, or was it the black and white? I can't remember now. Um, but it flips f the other way around for, it used to anyway, for great space. Again, another thing I have to figure out. <laughs> they keep changing the system as soon as I get used to it, working one way. It gets rearranged, so that's a bit annoying. But yeah, that's, these are all the things that are up in the air. Um, and then one of the other things that I'll probably start doing in Revolver is, is publishing some of my photography, which is something I used to, I mentioned, I used to do a lot of, uh, and I've just been getting into looking at my old negatives and things and digging those out and scanning them. Um, and I'm thinking I'll, I'll, I'll start printing some of the choice bits. Uh, and I got a new camera. Uh, a Canon EOS M. Uh, not a super fancy camera, but I prefer a mirrorless to a big DLSR right now. Uh, and it's got a large size sensor. And part of it's to do more photography, but also I want to experiment with filmmaking. Um, and I'm not sure what aspect of filmmaking we'll get into, but I'm definitely looking at concept design and art as a future career path. And so I'm using the camera to get into the habit of thinking about cinematic framing. But uh, some of the nice pictures, I think, are very presentable. So I might put in small galleries of my photographic work uh, into Revolver to share with you all. So, yeah, I mean, that's where things are at. Uh, I'm looking forward to moving into more small intervals of work. I don't really enjoy, I found, doing long story arcs in one big sitting. So, like, just doing Dracula or just doing Dream Life for a very long period of time is the way I did those two books. When I did There for a Pimp, that was 11 months, very condensed and fast. Um, that wasn't too bad, but it was still a little long. I think what I want to do more is bite-size intervals and, and leave myself room to shift gears. Like, the photography is a really good creative alternative outlet for me. And I find in general I need a diversity of creative uh, venues in order to stay fresh and engaged. If you're only doing one thing all the time, that's what usually leads to burnout and just the repetition of that. Long-form stories in comics, if you don't have a uh, ability to shift uh, and do other projects, can do the same. It doesn't mean that I won't tell long stories. I've got a couple that I want to do. I want to finish Dream Life, and I've got some other projects in the works. But I prefer the approach that I'm taking with The Bastard's Tale, which is doing it in little chunks, intervals, and then do something else for a little bit and go back, and then be able to shift around and stay uh keep my, my creative palette uh wetted and refreshed that way um so it works for me it probably doesn't work for everybody and i can't do many things at once it's one thing at a time but for shorter intervals instead of doing you know 12 months to two three years on a project i'd rather have three or four months here three or four months there a month there a month there a couple of weeks here photography is a great thing and, and for short intervals because i can do it for like a week and, and have a lot of fun and then go back to doing something else it's very low, low intensity in terms of the amount of planning and uh, how deep a dive it, it represents in terms of getting a project done. Um, filmmaking is going to be a bit more involved, but I think it also, I would think in terms of short films and documentary is sort of where my, my focus is in the moment in terms of doing my own filmmaking. I think that'll also represent an interesting venue for shifting gears and doing other things. Um, and you know, when I have the time, I, I'd like to do more recording, field recording, and but also thinking about podcasts. I'm not sure how I'd do that. I haven't really done interviews very much, but it's always kind of interesting as an idea. I don't think I'm the best interviewer, though, in my experience. I tend to talk too much, not ask enough questions and listen, which I think is the strong suit of a good interviewer. But uh, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that more. So anyway, that's my what am I up to update. If you're interested in following all this stuff, the place to go is patreon.com slash salgood, and that's where I'm going to be uh, posting updates as frequently as I can. I'm basically using it as my blog now. My website has a blog, work blog, but really I don't use that very often. Mainly I'm using Patreon as my blog, and then of course it's also the, the home base for Revolver in the future. If you pledge just $2 to Patreon, you automatically get access to digital download of all my independent published stuff and a few other goodies thrown in for good measure. Um, and uh, then all my YouTube tutorials get posted to there, and pretty much everything goes through Patreon at this point. So that is the place to go, and uh, you can follow it if you're on Patreon without even pledging, and then the public posts will show up in your feed. But uh, a minimum $2 pledge gets you the books, and then if you pledge a bit more, you can get uh, stuff in the mail. If you maintain your pledges for over $100, you definitely will get some books uh, down the road. Uh, but there's also uh, upper level, upper tier pledges for art or becoming a student patron. 
try to build in a few interesting opportunities. So check that out, uh, patreon.com slash salgood. And of course, as always, my work is at salgoodsam.com. And I'll see you around social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm on all those. Uh, and if you look on Amazon for Salgood Sam, you will find my books as well. Although, you get a better deal if you order them directly from my store on the site, on salgoodsam.com. Okay, that's it for now. Take it easy and stay engaged and creative, folks. <laughs>